Star Wars The Bad Badge just revealed trailer number two, an absolutely epic looking trailer and some new information, including the fact that the premiere will be 70 minutes long. This is where the fun begins. I want to break all of this down and talk about why I'm so excited for The Bad Badge, and if you're not you might want to get a little hyped because I do believe Dave Filoni is continuing to build out the seeds of the Filoni-verse and some of the big macro things that are coming with Thrawn, Grogu, and the Mandalorian. What's up, everybody? It's Josh. Welcome back to the channel. Smash that like button. And yeah, I'm I'm here in the cantina, and uh, I apologize if the audio is a little bit weird as well. Uh, I'm moving, going through a little bit of difficulties in my move. Silly thing. I was just working a minute ago. Video explanation on our Discord about what's going on and uh, how we're going to update that. But regardless, we need to talk about the Bad Batch. The trailer dropped yesterday while I was dealing with a bunch of stuff. I didn't get a chance to react to it or do a breakdown. So that's kind of what this is going to be. But I know a lot of people have already talked a lot about it. So let's just get into some of the things that I liked about the trailer. And then later in the video, we'll go into speculation town about how I think this show is going to just bring everything together from the Filoni verse building in to what I think is going to be a super big deal for Star Wars with like Grand Admiral Thrawn, Grogu, possibly Luke Skywalker and the Mandalorian. This big Filoni verse thing that I have been talking about. I do believe that the Bad Batch is a piece of that puzzle and will be exploring some very interesting things, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Okay, so first off, this trailer was dope, and I gotta be honest, the first trailer's better, in my opinion. The first trailer is better just functionally as a trailer, but this one does an incredible job of setting up some really important things that we need to be aware of as an audience member. Number one, as many people have pointed out, it does look like at least part of the show is gonna take place before Order 66. This is really interesting, and it may well even take place moments after we see these characters in the Clone Wars season seven. This is when Echo joins back with them before the end of that show. It was a, a, a moment that was changed from the 2015 original animatronics that were out there, which indicates to people that Dave Filoni really wanted to do something with those characters, with the 99. And in this new Filoni verse, he sort of figured out a way to tell interesting stories with them that would be impactful for the canon that he is building. I love the Grand Moff Tarkin aspect of the show, him looming heavy in this trailer, him putting the clones to the test and ultimately deciding that they need to be taken out and literally right in the trailer, putting it on Front Street Star Wars. But, you know, I feel you. We are going to be hunting down the 99. The Empire is going to be hunting down the 99. I love that. I think that's awesome, especially because Tarkin is trying to build towards stormtroopers. You know, he likely just doesn't like the clones. He's really not into what was going on with Django, the clones, Kamino, and everything like that. And it's going to be interesting to see the transition into the stormtrooper period of the Empire under Tarkin and what that's going to look like with them hunting down the 99 like this. We also do see this new blonde character that many people believe is a clone of Jango Fett or essentially a clone of Boba Fett, uh, but this character has this blonde hair and this weird Kamino-esque garb, including this like sort of crown thing. And due to the subtitles, we know that this character is named Omega. This character seems to play a really important role with what is going on. And people think the character is force sensitive because of of course they do. Oh no, I'm enjoying this far too much. We also see Fennec Shand in the trailer, which I thought was great. I love that character. I'm excited that we're tying threads together, making Fennec sort of go through a storyline to end up where she's going to be when we later check out the Book of Boba Fett later this year. I think that's a really smart move. So, you know, whether there was shuffling uh, around at Lucasfilm or not, this ends up being sort of the year of the clones, right? Because we have the Bad Badge, you know what I mean? And then we're getting into Boba. It's kind of like the clones are winning this year. Now, there's all kinds of theories and speculation on who Omega is, what's going on with that. Let's sort of table that for now. Now, the last big thing in the trailer that people are pointing out is we do see the character of Rex survive from the crash on whatever planet this is towards the end of the trailer. People are very excited about this. And again, it seems to be heavy heading in a direction that lines up with rumors and things that we have heard about the Filoni-verse. So now let me stop for a second and just say I think this trailer looks fantastic. They, there is like this rumor out there that 
seems to be picking up a lot of steam that the premiere episode will be 70 minutes in length. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I normally like to do a lot more due diligence to check into rumors like this, check with sources, but I'm like really busy with some stuff with the new place. So I don't know for sure. For now, I'm just going to say that that is a rumor, but I will say this, man, if that is true, that's absolutely incredible. And again, just shows that Filoni is going to go hard with this show. And really, this is going to be a very exciting thing for Star Wars fans. I want to just keep uh, reminding people too that the Clone Wars season seven was so successful for Disney Plus. They saw amazing numbers, like numbers that I don't know they were really expecting. And it kind of reminds me of Netflix. Like Netflix, like the Clone Wars at one time was one of the most watched things on Netflix. It, it made up a huge part of what the actual hours watched were being used on on the Netflix service. So this is a big deal, and also there are a lot of younger audiences that really respond positively to the Clone Wars stuff, and it is super key as Star Wars moves forward into all of these new ventures, all of these new storytelling opportunities, tied universes, you know, crazy projects that have nothing to do with each other. They have a large suite of shows. They do need to sort of fall back on some of their bedrock stuff, and Dave Filoni doing more Clone Wars content just is perfect. Hopefully just satisfies that fan base potentially brings in some new fans that are like this is cool and rock and roll because i will say this show is kind of like an a-team show which seems so right for the time like this just seems like a really great show again to sort of compliment book of boba and, and i think the direction we are heading with star wars content now Last thing I want to say here is I do still 100% believe that Grand Admiral Thrawn, Luke Skywalker, The Mandalorian, and Grogu are all a part of a big macro story plan that Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau are creating together that I have been referring to as the Filoniverse, simply because it uses a lot of the characters from Dave Filoni's Clone Wars stuff, like Ahsoka, like Bo-Katan, like a lot of the crazy things that we had reported reported would be showing up in the Mandalorian season two that many of you out there were skeptical about. You didn't think that they'd do that, bring in the cartoon stuff into live action. Now, I know many of you did believe that, obviously, and we're all really pumped about the direction it is going in. And again, we got some stuff wrong. Ezra, Bridger, anyone? I really wanted Ezra Bridger. I'll see you again. I promise. The point is, I think that is still totally a thing, but I think it's a thing that is in motion. I mean, let's be honest, guys. There's some rough stuff going on. You know, they're recalibrating stuff over at Lucasfilm right now. I still believe that they're going to nail it. And look, Mandalorian Season 2 was incredible. So we must put faith in in this team and i really do believe that dave worked really hard on bad batch and i think bad batch is going to be a very tight satisfying project that leads into some felony verse stuff so now let's get into the speculation we have heard slight spoiler warning here but we have heard that grogu will likely be in the bad batch show this comes from kessel run transmissions mostly it's been corroborated by some other people but i believe it belongs to Corey and noah for the exclusive i'm not 100 on that um, regardless, that is really interesting. And I've even heard some rumblings that it might be when Grogu is rescued from the temple and that the 99 may well be involved in that. And if there is this character of Omega that happens to be force sensitive, that's working with the clones and that character is liberated, then it stands to reason that could be a connection or a thread by which Grogu is also liberated and becomes a part of that journey as well. And by the way, what would be one very surefire way to get Tarkin and the Empire to turn against the 99? Well, to take one of the Emperor's most prized possessions and to force him to go nuts. And I think that may well be what happens. And with Fennec Shan possibly being involved in this as well and having some idea of the kid and now Luke Skywalker and all of these things that are going on, I guess I just kind of see the interwebs sort of kind of being built where we might literally get to that Avengers level event where we see a lot of the characters that we have met throughout these animated shows, throughout these live action shows, eventually meet up either in a big event on Disney Plus, a big finale for The Mandalorian or one of these other shows, or in a big movie that would be epic in scale and be something like Heir to the Empire where the whole galaxy is fighting against Grand Admiral Thrawn. 
Just a week ago, it was reported that Sebastian Stan would come and play Luke Skywalker if he got a direct blessing from Mark Hamill. I personally think that was a little bit of news to get us excited about a potential announcement and something that is being worked on behind the scenes. I strongly feel that Lucasfilm will lean into the Luke Skywalker character, figure out a fit for a live action actor, and really fill in the time period before the sequel trilogy with Luke Skywalker. I think it is a great idea and to give us like a version of the heir to the empire may well satisfy a lot of fans that are still personally burnt with what happened with the sequel trilogy and what is going on with lucasfilm and their way of managing the fan base all right, that's all I got for now. I know I haven't been doing a lot of Star Wars videos lately. Star Wars kind of drives me crazy. I think most of you know that. I do love Star Wars. I'm excited for Bad Batch. Can't wait to get back to making content. Also, I apologize for the weirdness of this video again. Uh, thank you guys for the support. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you in the next video.